All right, I'm here with Mr. Dan, a friend of mine, and he is going to talk to us about how to make some nice treats out of uh, a non-fructose source, which is very common in the world of, of sweets. So I... I, mean, I came to Mr. Dan's house. Mr. Dan, I said, is a friend of mine, but he's also an inventor. So he's uh, got all kinds of things he's dabbling in, mostly technology, but he's also got a sweet tooth, and he can kind of share his story as he makes this nice fudge treat for us. Yeah, very good. Okay, thanks a lot, Brian. And um, yeah, so we're going to be making some some really simple sort of fudge. And what we use for the sweetener on this is um, is glucose. We use pure glucose, and glucose. Regular table sugar consists of two different. Regular table sugar is um, has two molecules in it. One molecule is glucose, which is very very good for you. Actually, you die without glucose. That's how important it is for your body. And the other molecule that it has in regular sugar is fructose, which is very 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 bad for you. It taxes the liver. It causes triglycerides, which then convert into fat. Causes hypertension suppresses a thing called leptin, which then makes you continue to feel hungry even though you're full. So fructose is bad, glucose is good. Okay, so what we do is that we buy pure glucose. This is a bag of pure glucose. Okay, and glucose has a number of names, just like lots of different um, products have different sort of names to them. Glucose is a single molecule, so it's not like it's got DNA in it from you know, whatever its source was. It's actually the end product of something, just like um, water. You know, there's a molecule of water. There's a molecule of glucose. And glucose is called glucose. And it's also called dextrose. And it's also called um, simple sugar. And it's also called corn sugar. And the reason it's called corn sugar is that one of the major ways that they create, that they extract this molecule of um, glucose is by processing corn and ending up with the um, with the molecule of glucose. Now, so where do you buy glucose? That's a good question. Or it's usually you find it under the name dextrose. That's typical. Or in this case here, you'll see it says corn sugar. You can look here. It says corn sugar. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. There's no corn DNA in this. Okay. It's simply a molecule of um, of glucose. And so glucose is really good for your body. Fructose is really terrible for your body. Um, if you're making beer, things like that, that uses yeast, yeast does not like fructose. Fructose is bad for yeast. So we don't like, us humans, we don't like to have our um, yeast polluted with bad sugar. So we give it the good sugar, which is the glucose, and you buy the corn sugar um, at brewery supply places because that's all they sell there. They don't want to give their yeast bad sugar. They give them good sugar. <laughs> so it's very funny. Um, so you go to a brewery supply place. It's about a dollar to a dollar fifty a pound. It's really cheap. Got it. Glucose costs almost nothing. These are our ingredients here. We've got a little blender. we got the glucose, some sea salt. We're going to add sunflower seeds. And get those at Costco, seeds. sprouted sunflower seeds, and get those even at Costco. What else? We got a little bit of vanilla, pure vanilla, and some cocoa powder. We could also unsweetened. use unsweetened cocoa powder. We could also use raw cacao. Yeah, same thing. <coughs> and in the in the bowl, I forgot we have butter. Yeah. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna use two sticks. Two sticks of butter for this particular one. We do have an organic butter. Yeah, organic butter in this case. So. All right, so we're putting the two sticks of butter, and then we're going to put in some um, some of the unsweetened chocolate. We put in quite a bit of it. You might even show the bowl here while we're doing it. Sometimes okay. it looks better than that. Yep. So people can see how it's going to go in. So yep. we use quite a bit of it. Um, I like things pretty chocolatey. And we so. melted the butter slightly. Yeah, we just slightly warmed it. Yeah. We, it's, it's room temperature butter, basically. That's so kind we, of the goal. So of we it. have uh, two sticks of butter, and how much of that cooked? Uh, this was um, three heaping um, tablespoons. Okay. So Got it. does that seem like enough? Um, if it turns out it's not chocolatey enough, I usually, when I'm making um, these candies, I sample a lot. And I'll try just a little bit of it to see how am I doing. Is it chocolatey enough? Is it sweet enough? And, and, um, and that's what you should do. You should never just dump everything in and hope for the best. It's always better to sample a little bit. Got it. And we're going to put in a little bit of salt. Not a lot because it turns out we're using these um, sunflower seeds and these particular ones already contains some sea salt, it says. 
So we don't want to be salting our salt. Um, and I actually forgot the reason why we're doing this, Dan. Um, oh, Mr. Dan. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Dan here lost 30 pounds. Yes. And he simply took out fructose out of his diet and gluten. Anything else that you That's it. took out? No. no. Okay. No. You really haven't changed your exercise program, right? Not at all. I haven't exercised at all. I get criticized by that a lot. <laughs> you know. But no, that was but that was thirty pounds. Thirty okay. pound difference by just those two changes. And then, you know, I think, you know, how do you know this question I've had, I never asked you yet, but how do you know it's like I mean, do you know like is it fifty percent from taking out the gluten? Is it fifty percent taking out the fructose? What would you guess given you took both of them out did you take one out first so you actually know or? no i did them both at once okay uh, and i'm not sure which one contributed the most uh, <clears throat> and it's a little tricky too because because one of the things of course when you cut out gluten you tend to cut out most of the normal breads that you eat and most of the normal bread also is um has a lot of sugar in it a lot of table sugar or cane sugar by the way which is the same as table sugar all these other sugars they all have the fructose in them Yes. So when I cut out the, the breads, I also cut out a lot of that. So now, you of course, I put breads back into my diet, but I put them back in with appropriately made. So you'll make uh, you'll eat gluten-free grains, for example? Yes, gluten-free grains are fine. Okay. And, um, so you'll do quinoa. Well, quinoa is really a seed anyway, but yeah. um, oats. Oh, yeah. Everything else is on. Everything else on is that. on. Yeah, it really isn't that limiting. I mean, it's kind of limiting when you go to a regular grocery store. Yeah. Because just a huge amount of stuff is laced with, with wheat, which is the normal source of gluten. And a lot of it's laced with um, regular sugar. Okay. That's just, and that's true in, in um, um, nature stores, too. You go to, like, the natural, you know, blah, blah, blah store, and you'll look there, and they have all kinds of stuff that's not so good for you. All right, so our next step is going to be, the, um, is going to be our, our glucose sugar. Remember, it's also called corn sugar and also called um, dextrose and also called simple sugar. And we just basically are going to put in a couple of cups of this. Okay. And if it turns out we're not happy with it, I'm just going to cover in the, the sugar around. So he's an inventor, but he uses no measuring devices at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, well, because we're going to sample it. We're going to sample it and see if it tastes good. All right, very good. If it doesn't taste good, then... That was a couple of cups, approximately. It's a couple of cups of that. Yeah. Okay. And and we're just going to taste it. That's our whole goal here, is that when you're cooking, you just want to taste stuff and see how you're doing. I think I need a little bit of liquid in here, too. Okay. So, um, so one of the, because it makes it so it, it does it better. And so what I might do is take another half a stick of, um, of butter, and I might liquefy it. Okay. And if you don't like microwave ovens, which I have no problem with microwave ovens, but if you have one, then um, then don't um, then just melt it on the stove. And I'm going to get a microwave safe um, container. Microwave safe plastic containers are best for melting things because otherwise almost all the energy goes into the container, and almost no energy goes into the um, and almost no energy goes into the thing you're melting. Butter melts really, really fast. So even though I'm putting these in for 30 seconds, I don't even know if I'll wait 30. I'll probably wait like 15 seconds, and then I'll be done. You can see it's already down 20, 21. It doesn't yep. take 15 seconds okay. very long, so it's pretty quick. And again, I'm just doing this because it will make it easier to mix. I'm not Cut. doing it for any other particular reasons that are Cut. useful. And you can see it's relatively melted. Just yes. that quick. That's 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Yeah, so part of the other thing with the cooking that I like to do is everything that's fast. Because you don't want to be waiting around. Yeah, so you see it's nice it's liquidy now, right? So now mm -hmm. it looks like, oh yeah, I could probably mix that. Where before, it was all solids. And you're thinking, God, how am I going to mix all that? So just to make it easier to mix. Now, put this little bugger in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing I know a lot of people will be concerned about, like, oh, he's getting rid of fructose, but he's adding butter. So people are, are scared of things that they probably shouldn't be scared of, right, Dan? Yeah, yeah, but people thought for years that butter was bad, margarine was good. And it turns out it's kind of the opposite. It turns out the margarine, almost all of it back then, anyhow, was made out of um, um, partially, um, what's it, um, well, basically a trans fat. Right. So it would end up clogging up your system. That's why yeah. trans fats, for instance, are illegal in, in New York. Yeah. So, and butter's fine for you. And we're just mixing it up. Mm. 
something that a lot of people are concerned that, you know, butter or any other fats will increase their fat. Oh, yeah, that turned out to be a myth too. You know, fat, eating fat doesn't make you fat. So now I'm going to take a small sample. Let's try. Pretty sweet. Might try a little bit yourself. Tell me what you think. It's always mm -hmm. good to you try a little bit always. Just a mm -hmm. little tiny little finger full of it just to see if, just to see if it's, um, you know, maybe a little bit sweeter it should be or not. Just It's kind of to taste. You know, some people like really sweet stuff and some people don't. I think it tastes great, but it's I, I, I love butter. So um, love it's very buttery. I think it's pretty good. Um, it's pretty good, pretty even. Yeah. Okay. Good. Up now, to you. If you think it can be improved, okay. go for it. Probably okay. I think I might add a little bit more, maybe I'll add a little bit more um, vanilla to it. And the sweetness was from what? The sweetness is all from the glucose. Okay. How much glucose did you throw in there again? Yeah, a couple cups. A couple cups, okay, got yeah. it. That's right. A couple cups of that. And I'm going to put the sunflower seeds. You don't need much of these, like a quarter cup or something like that. So the sunflower seeds are optional, but uh, yeah. it will actually make the fudge a little more crunchy. Yeah, more crunchy. And the other thing you can do is you can, you can substitute some of the butter for, um, like half the butter for peanut butter or almond butter, cashew butter, one of those things. And then you get that flavor as well. Um, I've made them with the peanut butter because I'm not allergic to peanuts, and it ends up tasting like a Reese's peanut butter cup. All right, so you would go one or one stick of the uh, yeah, regular once, butter. Yeah, one stick of the regular butter, or a stick and a half, and the rest of it being the um, the peanut butter or the almond butter. How much? How many scoops of almond butter or sunflower butter would you add? About Maybe the same amount that you were going to use. Maybe a third or uh, half a cup or a cup or something. Half a okay. Cup to a cup. You really can't put in too much. <laughs> if you put in way too much, then you just add more. Then like, okay. gee, it's too peanut buttery. Then you add more of the unsweetened cocoa, and you add Got more it. of the the dextrose, and you just have a bigger batch. Got so it. sometimes what will happen with me is I'll experiment, and I'll have a small amount of whatever I'm making. I'm like, oh man, I need more peanut butter. Then I'll add more. It's like, oh, I put in too much peanut butter. I need more chocolate. Oh man, I have too much you know, cocoa. I right. better now it's not sweetened. I'll put in more dextrose, mm -hmm. and pretty soon my batch will be really big yep. <laughs> because all of. So I'm gonna, uh, What, so you just and we're done. Yeah, that's the entire. That's it. What done. what was the other ingredient you added here? Was that the vanilla? Yeah, some vanilla extract. Okay, got it. Um, vanilla just extract. Because the vanilla extract is kind of nifty stuff. And how much of that did you put in? Uh, I put in maybe a half a teaspoon. Not very much. Okay. Just enough to make it taste so okay. nice. Alrighty. And again, we'll try just a little bit of it. To see if we're really happy. Yeah. So I, I tried this when it was completed and after it was been refrigerated and. It was really, really good. <laughs> so what we do is we cheat for almost everything. Because like, again, everything is impatient, impatient, impatient. Um, so what we're going to do next here is we're going to dump all this into a pan. You can see the size pan we're yep. using. Um, the smaller the pan is, the thicker the pieces will be. Okay. So some people like they just like it thicker you know, because it looks cooler. And I'm just going to. Dump it in here. I think total time on this is, or total creation time on this is probably well under five minutes of actual time doing stuff. So. Our, our video is 14 minutes right now, but yeah, it makes sense we're, we're going a little slower. But especially when you do it a few times, you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. And all right, so then what you do is just even this out in the pan. Okay. Let's see here, we're just kind of making it so it looks. Evenish because whatever shape this has is how it's going to look when it's um, solidified. Mm -hmm. okay. So and you add this. How many? You added sunflower seeds in there. Yeah. Just, you just sprinkled a handful just in. Sprinkled a handful in there. You could put a, some additional ones on top if you like. Right? That might be kind of fun. Let's do that. Let's, <laughs> do that. Let's do that. And again, if you if you're eating nuts and you know, as well, you could throw. Almonds in there, walnuts would probably be a normal fudge, right? If you were eating yeah. bad yeah, fudge. Really typical here. Yeah. All right, so we'll just put sort of a. Right, put yep. some of those in there. Very nice. Okay. Now what we do next is I just can't stand to wait very long. We put it in the freezer. Okay. Down here. Yes. And this way, in about five minutes, we'll be able to try this. All right. 
Very good. Well, that's as quick as it'll go. Of course, I need to waste some of this. Do you want to try a little bit of this? This is our final. No, I'm good. Do you have any of the um, the final outcomes so I can just show what that looks like after it's frozen? You said five minutes is going to look. He already had some. Yeah, we have was already pre-made. So, so this, so this is the end product. Again, looks like normal everyday fudge. We have two here. This is the peanut. This is the um, the richer one with the with the peanut butter, yes. and this is the yeah, regular the, butter. The darker one is peanut butter infused, yes, uh -huh. <laughs> and then the other, the lighter is just straight up. Um, there's no sunflower seeds in that either. So that's the end product. Doesn't look anything different, but it tastes rich, creamy, uh, satisfying. It's very satisfying. Yeah. It's very so, so we'll we'll wait for that. But um, we're also going to shoot another video in a moment, right? Uh, what's yeah. what's the next one going to be? Next, we'll do um, we'll do like a peanut brittle or equivalent. We'll do a mixed nut brittle. There's little okay. peanuts. We're going to use it. this right here. Okay. I thought we we're going to use the uh, sunflower seeds. Oh yeah, we can do sunflower seed brittle. That's yep. good. So again, you can use either one. You could use yeah, it nuts. Really to I'm just trying to. Yep. Have people stay away from nuts on my particular 28 oh, day program. Right. So, right. yeah, no nuts, just seeds. But, uh, and yeah. Also, I mean, and also remember, cashews are a seed for people who yes. are thinking about that. People yes. think cashews are nuts, but they're not. All right, that's good to know. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So, we're again, thank you, Mr. Dan. You're awesome. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to having people try this out and, you know, see what a different type of treat will do for them. All right, thanks, Dan.